Hi everyone, this video is for you if you want to work on data science coding projects, start your data science portfolio, or want to set up virtual environments for your Python packages, but don't really know where to start. By the end of this quick video, you will have a working version of Conda virtual environment set up on your local machine, ready to go. And this environment will be perfect to follow along all of my coding tutorials and your own personal projects. This video is beginner friendly as we're gonna walk through step-by-step step exactly how you can set this up for the very first time on your local machine. We'll be using the installer from Anaconda, terminals if you're using a MacBook, or command prompt if you're using window machine. Just a quick note here, if it ever comes up in your data science interview, a virtual environment is a dedicated space where you can install Python packages and libraries specific to your project without interfering with other projects or your global environment. An example of this is if you need to build an application or have a project that needs 1.2 version of the pandas package, but you have a different application or project that's built upon 1.5 version of pandas and you install both of those versions in your global environment, things are gonna break. And given that you should have three to five projects in your data science portfolio in order to stand out to employers, you should definitely have a virtual environment set up. There are typically two common virtual environment options. You could use Python's built-in vinv module, which you can read more about on the Python's official documentation page. I will also link this in the description box below. An alternative to this is Conda. The advantage of Conda is that it doesn't just manage virtual environments, but also make it super easy to install packages like NumPy, Pandas, and Matplotlib, which are all commonly used in data science projects, all with a simple command, Conda install. To install Conda, let's go to docs.conda.io backslash projects backslash Conda and slash stable because we want the stable version of Conda. And depending on what machine type you have, you should use the installer for your specific machine. I have a Mac OS here, so I'm going to go ahead and download Mac OS Apple Silicon for mini Conda. Click allow. It should be pretty straightforward to follow even if you don't have a Mac machine and can't follow with me on the screen. Let's go ahead and click on the installer that you just installed and follow the prompt on the screen. So continue, continue, agree. And I want to install for all users of this computer. Install, giving in my password. The installation was completed successfully. Let's close the tab and move the installer to trash. Next, let's open up our terminal. If you're on Windows, open up your command prompt. Let me enlarge the sides here so you can see better. Okay, so you can use the conda-v to check if there is already an existing version of conda in your system. In this case, I just downloaded a conda 24.7.1. From here on, now that we have our conda, it's actually pretty straightforward to set it up. You want to create a new conda environment for every application or every project that you're working on. To do that and everything else in Conda, all we have to do is just to find the syntax for the appropriate commands. And you can find everything on Google, ChatGPT, or you can go to the documentation provided by Conda at docs.conda.io. Just following the documentation here, it says Conda create double dash name and then my inf. So you wanna replace the my inf with your actual environment name. Let's copy that, conda create name. I'm going to name this Maggie and Data Projects, but you can give it any name you like. Ideally, it should be something that's reflective of your project that you're working on. For example, bike share, if you're using the bike share data, something that you can remember and know to activate this specific environment when you're working on this specific project. When I ask you if you want to proceed, we'll type in Y as in yes. And now we have our Conda environment. If you want to download a specific version of Python for the specific environment, you can follow the step three here. It says Conda, create your name and then the name of environment, specify which version of Python you want to download specifically. Now, if we want to activate our Conda environment, all we have to do is to type in Conda, activate. We named it Maggie and data underscore projects. 
And you see how the words at the very beginning of the line changed from base to Magin data projects. And that's how we know we're in the specific project environment. In the case that you are done with a project or you want to switch to a different environment, you can simply deactivate your current environment by typing conda deactivate Maggie in data underscore projects. Projects. Okay. Yeah, sorry, my syntax. So you don't actually have to type out the name. Just write conda deactivate and it will go back to the base global environment. Let's say you want to download a specific package. So we want to activate this environment again, kind of activate Magin data underscore projects. We want to download, let's say Seaborn. It's the package for visualization. All we have to type is conda install Seaborn. Proceed, type in Y for yes. And now we have the Seaborn library installed inside our virtual environment. So the next time when you open up this environment again, you don't have to install this package. It's already in there, ready to go for you. And that's it. It's really simple, right? But doing this, it's really going to help you manage your projects better. In case you're wondering what can you actually use this for or what does it look like in practice, let's open up a Jupyter Notebook in VS Code. In case you're not familiar, VS Code is a code editor where we can type in our Python commands. And when we have, for example, a, let's just on desk, this is really not a good practice, um, but we're just gonna create a temp Jupyter notebook file. So, if you want to do any of your analysis, you can do it in here. When you hit run on something, it's going to ask you to select a kernel. And that's where you will select the Python environment that we just created so that we can connect the virtual environment to the code which we're running it from. Another way to do this is you can open up a terminal from Virtual Code Studio by clicking on the terminal command, new terminal. And from here, you can do the same thing that we did in our local terminal. So conda activate Maggie and data underscore projects. And it's connected with the notebook you're running it from as well. And that's it. Congratulations on successfully setting up your first Anaconda environment. I know it's a super easy step, but it could be such a blocker if you don't know how to start. I hope you find this video useful. Give this video a thumbs up if you learned something new. And let me know in the comment if you're able to follow along and figure it out and what kind of projects you're looking to learn. I'll see you in my project tutorial videos.